Hey there, I'm Andrew, online web teacher, and on this lesson number three, we are going to learn about all the types of network that exist nowadays. So let's get to it. If we want to connect just two computers or devices together, we can use either a cable, we can make a Bluetooth link, uh, for example, if you want to connect uh, your computer to your cell phone and copy pictures, um, you know, to it or from your cell phone to your computer. Um, you can also do it using an, a special Wi-Fi uh, option called ad hoc, which is in Latin. Um, you can also do it using infrared and etc. You know. So those are the different ways that you can uh, connect the two computers together. Now, this very small network of just two computers is usually called a personal area network, or PAN for short. And at the same time, it's also a local area network. Okay? So... It's the same to call it, you know, either a PAN or a LAN, okay? Um, but that's, uh, it's usually called a PAN because it's just two computers. So what if we want to connect three computers instead of just two? Now, um, in theory, you should be able to make a network of three computers using just cables but you will need to have two network cards on each computer okay two network ports to connected cables on each uh, computer connected to that network okay um, no one does that uh, at least not usually Back in the old days, there was this special network type called token ring that did this, all right? Um, but the problem was that if you turned off one of the computers, the other two computers uh, didn't have a connection because the ring was broken. Um, thankfully, nowadays, we have much better options to connect computers together. Now. You can also choose, which is what most of us usually do, to purchase a special network appliance um, to act like the server of all the, the incoming computers that you want to connect. Okay? Um, and this network appliance uh, could be either something called a hub a switch or a router and what is the difference between the all three is how intelligent they are in the case of a hub it works just like an electricity outlet so you just plug in the cable and you're on the net that's it now let's say that for example if you access to your network from the outside and want to reach a particular node inside your network okay um, well a hub won't be able to do it because it's not smart enough to handle that you in order to do this uh, you would need either a switch or a router Okay, switches are pretty cheap, so you can use a switch, usually. So, switches, have, and switches and routers have lots of options, usually, uh, that you can configure, you know, firewalls, and, uh, you know, if you access from the outside to a specific port to go to that machine inside the network, and so on, it's... I'll explain that with much better detail in the future, but, well, uh, you can do it with a hub. So that's the difference between them, how smart they are. Um, 
So basically, you can connect this sort of local area network. Um, oops, the text is in white. All right. So you can connect this local area networks using, uh, you know, cable if you have um, two network ports on each computer. You can also use USB. It's um, you know a somewhat new way to connect them, but you can use USB, uh, USB hubs, and so on. You can also use Wi-Fi because there are some switches that are Wi-Fi switches, um, or you know a hub switch or router using cable. Okay, and this network type is called a local area network, which is a network of usually more than one or two computers. If you remember, we call the network between two computers a personal area network. Um, so if you have more than two computers, that would classify as a local area network. Now, what if um, we have a very big local area network? Um, for example, let's say that for some reason, we want to connect in, um, in the same network all the houses in the city. Well, there are many ways that you can do that. You can either use Wi-Fi, uh, routers, you know, satellites, uh, uh, microwaves, uh, radio frequencies, infrared, and so on. But it necessarily doesn't have to be big. Um, let's say that you want to hook up in the same network all the banks in the city for whatever, whatever purpose, right? So you want to, you know, connect all the banks in the city. There are like 80, 100 banks all over the place spread around all the city and they are all located very far from each other and they are all spread around this very big area which is the whole city well this sort of network is called a metropolitan area network okay that's how it's called and like I said before you can do this using Wi-Fi I think that San Francisco has something like this uh, you can do this with um, a special routers using fiber optics or satellites or microwaves, radio frequencies, infrared and so on. Um, so that's a, a metropolitan area network. Now, um, what if we want to connect all the cities in the country together for whatever reason? Uh, well, that, <laughs> that would be a very big network. Uh, but at the same time, uh, let's take a more real example. What if um, we have a company with um, subsidiaries all around the, the world and you want to connect all the, uh, the offices on, for example, one in New York, the other in uh, Los Angeles, the other in London or and in, in Tokyo and in Shanghai and so on. Well, that that would cover an extense area, right? A very big area, the whole planet. And uh, you can do that using you know routers, using the um, uh, fiber fiber optic cables. You can do that using satellites or radio frequencies. And this sort of gigantic networks of either many computers is panned all around the country or spread around vast distances like one in New York and the other in Bangalore or whatever, uh, that is called a wide area network 
or one for short. So that's a, a one. And finally, we get to the internet, which is usually called the network of networks. And like we can see in this graphic right here, um, there are many, many small dots and, and it basically resembles like, uh, you know, a tree, right? With many leaves and, and, uh, and all this stuff. So basically each of these, for example, this, uh, this blue one right here, um, if this were, uh, I don't know, New York, uh, the whole city of New York. This will be a, a metropolitan area network. But if you pay attention and you look up this graphic, you will see, for example, uh, this node right here, okay, in red, uh, will be connected to another node that is across the whole thing on the other side. And that would be, for example, uh, a network link uh, between offices in, in Los Angeles and Shanghai or whatever reason and and this is basically the internet and how does the internet you know uh, work uh, how do you connect all these networks together and the answer is all across the ocean floor um, Many governments and uh, private companies have laid out these gigantic fiber optic cables um, and they all get to specific points on each country like you'll, you'll, you'll see here on this picture uh, most of the cables go to into the US uh, but many of them also go to Europe and they connect uh, all the continents together and that is basically how the internet works uh, or basically how the internet is connected which is much different so you can do this using routers you know special routers that are prepared to receive all these gigantic cables which are called uh, internet backbones we'll see we'll see this much later or you can do this using satellites connection you know so this is the end of this um this third lesson i hope you enjoyed it and if you learned something new um i suggest you to subscribe and if you do subscribe i see you on the next class so thank you very very much for watching and uh, goodbye